Um, and looking at the uh, hotspots in Fukushima, um, it seems to be possible that uh, actually there will be even more there. It might actually be that Japan, in Japan we will get even more serious birth defects, what, what, uh, abnormalities, what do you think? I think probably not. And the reason is that in the West, what happens is that uh, all children are scanned in the womb with ultrasonic equipment. And, and if anything goes wrong, they are, they, are, uh, they are clinical abortions. So if you're just looking at birth defect rates, what you find is that they don't really go up very much in the West. The problem with Fallujah is they didn't have that equipment. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, I'm afraid. <laughs> I, I would say that developed countries with, oh, with right, these sorts of okay. complicated um, equipment. I'm not. What you probably will see uh, from Chernobyl is you will see a sharp reduction in the birth rate. Uh, or in Japan, the, um, what they have experienced in the past is uh, radio, uh, radioactive exposures from Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and then another one is uh, the workers who work inside the uh, the nuclear power plants, but this, uh, the, these ones, for example, uh, are quite low doses, and um, uh, they, they have some data on them, but these people are usually um, dying quite, quite later on, for example, after they've, um, after they've retired. Um, but now what is happening is that some citizens are collecting data about things like nosebleeds and things like that, perhaps diarrheas, um, but there are no uh, past data about these sort of things in Japan. Um, uh, what he would like to know is that if, is, if there is any uh, scientific um, uh, any scientific survey data about accumulated doses which result in these kind of problems. Well, there's all, there are a number of different problems here. The, 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 the problems about the immediate exposure to hot particles that um, a study I have done myself with my group on the test veterans, the, the veterans of uh, the new test testing at Christmas Island and, and in Australia. And all, uh, the, all of these people reported a number of symptoms immediately after arriving at the test sites. And this wasn't to do with their exposures from the bomb. These were just living on the test sites where this material was on the ground. And they all of them had one of the most common um, reporting was for nosebleeds. They also had diarrhea, they had eye problems and flu-like symptoms and they developed skin <coughs> rashes. And we know from work uh, with children in Iraq that have been exposed to uranium weapons that they, they, their fingernails become very sore and they, they get septic fingernails because the dust collects underneath the fingernails and produces a high beta dose to lead to the fingernails and so they get sepsis underneath the fingernails. Uh, it, uh, this thing from, from the Green Audit, is this actually on the uh, internet somewhere? I think it's on the um, uh, website, but it's been published at the moment by, it's been sent to, the, uh, uh, to, to a journal called Occupational Environmental Medicine, um, and it was, uh, it was reported in the British House of Commons, um, also, this study, mm. uh, in, in the Parliament. <laughs> Um, it's about the air filters. Um, it seems that perhaps in the ones from Fukushima, uh, it's almost certain that there is plutonium in them. I, 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 I don't really like in science to say that anything is certain, <laughs> um, but we are certainly looking, and I think it's quite likely that the, the, there is plutonium. Yes, and um, especially since we found plutonium in filters in the United Kingdom, which, um, which came from Fukushima. Uh, to, kind of Fukushima from Chiba. Um, uh, there was that hot particle, um, the, the 0.5 uh, millimeter one. Um, quite simply, uh, is there plutonium in that? 
couldn't possibly stay. I mean, we, we, we just have to wait and do some analyses and uh, we can't really do an analysis which will tell us that there's plutonium in something like that because we have to isolate the particle and then we would have to do electron microscopy. And it's really quite a tricky business and costs a lot of money and we don't have much money. Um, um, there is no certain um, survey or something that shows that there is actually plutonium floating around in the air in Tokyo at the moment, is there? No. So there is no kind of hope of that. Uh, the atomic industry people um, want to say that, uh, even if uh, plutonium is coming out of the, of the reactors, it's not going to go very far. Um, what do you think about that? They, they say it doesn't go more than about a mile or something because it's heavy or something like that. Yeah. But do, what, what would be your comment on that? Well, the model of the nuclear industry that they sell is about on the level of the sort of books that people write to teach children how to read. <laughs> Scientific work on the, on, on the resuspension of particles of plutonium from the Nevada test site have been published for many, many years since the 1960s. It's actually, never mind about coming down, they go up. Plutonium particles released from the uh, Sellafield site in Cumbria have been measured in sheep uh, feces across the entire width of the United Kingdom, more than 250 miles. Although a piece of plutonium the size of an apple might well fall to the ground. Particles below one micron in diameter behave entirely as if they were a gas. Pardon? Particles below one micron in diameter uh, behave entirely as if they are a gas. Uh, Uranium, which has the same density after the Gulf War in 2003, was collected in filters at the atomic weapons site in the United Kingdom, 2,000 miles away. So the, the Japanese government have said um, as, a, as a standard that uh, plutonium uh, of about uh, 5 millisieverts is okay. What do you think about that? Uh, I, I, it's, it, it, it seems to be some misunderstanding. You, you can't have plutonium of 5, five millisieverts. If they mean that a, an exposure of 5 millisieverts is okay from plutonium, then that's criminal irresponsibility. Uh, say that plutonium from Fukushima has been picked up by the American RADnet system in Guam, uh, in the Marianas, and also in the Philippines. In the ECRR model, um, you said that I think what he means is that they compared with the IC, ICRP model. Uh, you've got to multiply by about 600, um, but uh, if you're talking about children, then what would the factor be? Well, both the ECRR and the ICRP recognize that children are more sensitive, because this is what science, what, what measurements have shown, um, and it depends upon how old the children are. So, um, very roughly, I think, for children aged uh, about 10, you would multiply by 5, and for children aged about one, you would multiply by about ten. What is You have to be a bit careful because this depends upon which radionuclides we're talking about. And we we have been modelling Fukushima on the basis of the, of the of the same sort of um, spectrum of radionuclides as we find in Chernobyl, and it may not be exactly the same because there are, there there are differences in in the in the, in the uh, process. It may not be as bad as we predict, but it may be more, uh, maybe worse than we predict. But what we certainly would stand by is that it's going to be a lot worse than the ICRPs. Uh, but yeah. the, point of, the point about being here and why I'm here mm -hmm. is because I want people to get the you know, uh, get those children and adults who are being exposed out of the area. I want to help save lives. This is the point about this. 
let's not get too worked about numbers of deaths, but every person that we take out of that area, every child that we remove from that area, will be a child that we might save the life of. And this is why it's so important that we act now. He seems to be asleep or hypnotized. Wake up. Uh, it seems that in Japan that uh, what they're measuring is the cesium, um, and what they probably should be doing is, is measuring other nuclides, and especially um, alphas and betas. Um, it, can you tell us a little bit about um, the, the, the difficulties of measuring these things and uh, how they might go about it, things like that? Yes. Um, cesium-137 is very, very easy to measure. It has a very strong gamma emission line, which is quite easy to identify, and you can even identify it by flying over in a helicopter, which is actually a very useful way of show, showing where the main contamination is. But cesium-137 is not, in, in the opinion of the committee, particularly dangerous. The, the dangerous isotopes uh, that one needs to concern oneself with are, are strontium-90, uh, and plutonium, and, and particularly uranium, which is very rarely measured. But in fact, uranium is the main component of this accident. It's uranium that's going to be everywhere. And we know from the work that's been done, huge amount of work that's been done following the Iraq wars, that uranium is fantastically more toxic, genotoxic, than anyone had ever imagined in this particular form. So all of these things should be measured, and the other one that should be measured that's been completely ignored and is extremely toxic and, and causes all sorts of developmental defects and birth defects and, uh, is tritium, which is radio basically radioactive water. And there's going to be a phenomenal amount of tritium because of the huge amounts of uh, water that have been pumped in continuously into these reactors. <coughs> which will turn the ordinary water into tritium, because that's how you make, make tritium. You make tritium by putting neutrons into ordinary water. And so, that, and so I, I would be very surprised if there isn't tritium in the tap water in Tokyo, and certainly in the tap water in, in, in areas uh, closer to the, the um, accident site. And in fact, we are measuring. We're, we, we have some samples now which are in for tritium testing, so we'll be able to tell you about that. Mm.